and get started, even though we've got some folks still trickling in here. Um, but since we have the hour together, we want to make the most of our time. So I will go ahead and get us started. So we are so pleased to have you with us on today's webinar as part of the Effective Implementation Cohort Project. I see lots of familiar faces um, and some new ones as well, which is always great to see. Um, do us a favor, go ahead and say hi in the chat and just let us know where you're joining from today as I go ahead and get us started. Um, I'm Stephanie Kennedy. I'm an implementation specialist with NERN or the National Implementation Research Network out of UNC Chapel Hill. I've had the pleasure of supporting several provider district dyads in the EIC along their math implementation journeys. Um, a bit about the EIC if you're joining us for the first time or could use a refresher. The EIC is a project funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation designed to help school districts across the country implement an instructional system that supports using a high quality middle school math curriculum. The EIC aims to increase school districts' capacity to implement such a curriculum in order to accelerate learning for students experiencing poverty, Black, Latino, Latina, and or English learner designated students. As part of this work, the EIC learns um, and shares with others outside of the project um, a few things. So what districts need to have in place for effective implementation, what aspects of implementation most benefit priority students, and the work involved in making site-wide implementation successful. So today, I'm excited to highlight the work of ConnectEd and their EIC districts around strengthening implementation through cross-district collaboration. Um, ConnectEd has worked with San Diego Unified Schools, Colton Joint Unified Schools, and West Contra Costa Unified Schools to systematize the adoption and implementation of various versions of the Illustrative Mathematics or IM curriculum. ConnectEd's foundational frameworks support collaboration around context and as such, helped identify a need and opportunity to build meaningful connections among those three California districts that they support in this work. We have some amazing folks from ConnectEd and the districts here with us who uh, I promise you'll, you'll, you'll hear directly from in just a minute. Um, but just to give you an idea of how today's gonna go, we have about an hour together. We'll have some time for Q&A, but please also feel free to drop questions or comments in the chat as we go along so that we can make sure to capture them. Along with today's webinar, we've published a brief about this work that is uh, now available on the EIC website or will be available very soon and shared with you after today. Um, so we encourage you to take time to read that and share um, that brief as well. So without further ado, I'm going to allow our presenters to introduce themselves and dive into their story of cross-district collaboration. So Tamira, I'll hand it over to you. Hi, everybody. I am Tamira Walker, and I'm the Associate Director of Instructional Impact and Mathematics here at Connect Ed. And I'm going to queue up the team here um, to do just a, a brief introduction, your name, uh, your title, and where you're representing. Um, so let's start with the Connect Ed team. Uh, Kira? Hi, everybody. My name is Kira. Uh, I'm the Director of Instructional Design and Research. Okay, Vincy. Hey, everybody. I'm Vincy. I am the Director of Instructional Impact and Mathematics. Happy to be here. Uh, Jessica? Good afternoon. My name is Jessica Walsh. I'm from San Diego Unified and Program Manager for Mathematics. Glad to be here. Mark? Hi, everybody. Mark Labaco, West Contra Costa Unified, K-12 Math Coordinator. Great to be here. And Denise? Cheetah from Colton Joint Unified School District. I'm the Curriculum Program Specialist for Secondary Math. Wonderful. Okay, so that's our presentation team uh, today. So uh, we're going to get into our individual um, district uh, presentation. So let's start with you, Mark, handing it over to you. Great. Thanks a lot, Tamira. Um, so uh, I guess each of us are going to talk a little bit about our districts in general before we jump into um, other things. So we wanted to share uh, our vision and uh, our mission in West Contra Costa. Um, you may recognize the the vision coming from IAM. It's it's such a wonderful vision. We decided to use it straight away. Um, but our mission includes uh, things that are 
that uh, that you'll notice um, have a lot to do with with just great mathematical practices and or just great teaching practices. Um, in particular, some things you'll read there with growth mindset focused. Um, took research from uh, Carol Dweck and and Joe Bowler from Stanford. Um, some of the stuff with regarding grade and course level stuff and mathematically rigorous stuff uh, directly from some of the work that TNTP did with uh, with the opportunity myth. Um, so some stuff that we really feel strongly about with uh, with what uh, learners should be uh, provided by with instruction. Next slide. Uh, West Contra Costa Unified is located in uh, San Francisco Bay Area. We're in the East Bay, north of Oakland uh, and Berkeley area. Um, we have a, a diverse population, both ethnically and income wise, uh, that runs across uh, many municipalities. We um, we have a large EL population as well, um, and uh, we're kind of a mid-sized district. We have six comprehensive high schools. We're using Amplified Desmos 6.8 for our math curriculum. And I think that kind of covers me. Um, I think I'd pass it along. Oh, no, it's me again. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so, yeah, here's our journey. Um, so back in the, uh, in the pandemic days, uh, we were invited to participate uh, in this EIC cohort. And uh, our, our middle school curriculum just was not very good high quality at all. So uh, being a former math, uh, middle school math teacher, um, I thought it was a great opportunity to uh, jump in to get some high quality math and uh, materials to uh, to teachers like me. And so we didn't have any adoptions on the horizon. So uh, we decided to jump on in. Um, the process was going to be opt in. And so as you look through the years, you'll notice that we grew uh, substantially over the past three years and uh, I've been asked from several people how you got it done uh, with this opt-in mechanism and uh, both me and my my right arm coach Shauna Foster we, we've been in the district for quite some time since the 90s so uh, we built some relationships with teachers and with administrators so I think the trust factor had a lot to do with uh, with how we've been able to build um, uh, this this network for for the CIC cohort, uh, but we're we're doing great. We're really excited to keep things mo moving, uh, even uh, without a full adoption yet. Uh, but we hope to actually get adoption for the following school year, uh, and we're just excited about the progress. And uh, we've learned a lot, and looking forward to uh, sharing a little bit of that with you. All right. Good afternoon. Um, thank you, Mark. Uh, to go into a little bit of our vision. Um, and when we started looking at what we really wanted to see in San Diego with all of our partners, our communities, including our students, our teachers, our parents, the adults in our system, is that we wanted to have everyone see themselves as mathematicians. And so working toward where everyone is a mathematician and that they are knowledgeable and they can apply their thinking making sense of the world and can communicate their reason. So we think about what we want students when they leave our system, we want them to be critical thinkers and problem solvers. And we want to get this to come alive in all of our math classrooms. And so when we think about what curriculum we wanted to have as a foundation, uh, we were leading with this. And so to give you a little bit about our um, our district. Actually, I can go to this one. Um, so a little bit more about our beliefs and agreements is that uh, it's really around making connections with our kids and our students and our families. And so we believe that everyone can succeed in math um, and that we acknowledge all of our learners, our multilingual learners, um, students with learning differences, and students that have historically um, haven't had the opportunities as others might have. And so when we talk about when, what does it look like when we do math, um, you're going to see the curriculum that we chose is that we want students to talk and engage with each other. And it's every day. Um, we think critically about the math tasks and that we make it our thinking visible. And then our feeling and connection comes in. It plays a key vital role in um, making that mathematics come alive. Uh, we want students and our teachers to enjoy the math, um, bring out that curiosity and joy, and then to feel confident. 
And um, we believe that a foundational curriculum can help support uh, our beliefs. So a little bit about our district. Actually, can I have you go to the next slide um, on our district? So San Diego Unified, um, we are the second largest district in California, um, sometimes confused with the San Diego te uh, in Texas, but we are in California. Um, we have a large population of a little under 100,000 students, and we also are a very diverse uh, population with ethnicity and income. Um, we have a large majority of multilingual learners, and depending on schools, it could be closer to 70%. Um, and some schools may be closer to 5%. So it's definitely a, 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 um, a spectrum. Same thing with uh, students with IEPs. Um, and a little bit about our school sites. Uh, we have about 176 school sites, 24 of them being middle level. And we also have 10 that are uh, K-8s and in also some atypical ones, so six to 12. But all in all, uh, what you're gonna hear today is we are supporting 39 school sites with the implementation of um, a high quality curriculum. And then the next slide, our journey through this is that we started a lot of oh, several years ago um, in 2014 when we were when we first adopted a new curriculum it was big ideas back then and teachers were noticing that they wanted something different they wanted something more student-centered things um, tasks more open tasks uh, to align with that framework so we had we had teachers starting to use illustrative ma math back in 2016 and so we were super excited as this grant opportunity came available with Connect Ed and EIC is that we were able to um, take it to the next level and bring in more schools and provide professional learning. And so you can see as the years went on, we started to do um, build more and more schools in also including elementary and high. Um, this year, in 23-24, we did a district-wide uh, adoption of Amplify Desmos Math. Um, many of our teachers loved the, the illustrative math, and they also liked the Desmos component. And so uh, many of our schools shifted to the Amplify Desmos. And um, in the next coming years, we're going to be looking at elementary and high school as adopting a high-quality curriculum. And then um, the next slide. Okay, go ahead. I will pass it on to Denise. Hi. Um, so uh, our focus has been really um, around English language learners. Um, we have been involved with um, some grant work and math for a number of years, even prior to this one, and the focus was always around um, the language learners, um, about uh, them um, uh, you know, because in math, I think they've been so denied. I mean, most kids have been so denied in language and mathematics. And so we decided to focus on our highest need. And by, by focusing on our highest need, then um, where it's actually good for everybody else when we focus on the, on the English learner. Um, and next slide. So we are in the um, San Bernardino County. Um, we are just west of San Bernardino. So in Colton, we actually um, cover a number of areas. We are part of Grand Terrace. We're part of Bloomington. Um, we're part of Fontana. So we're kind of caught in the middle of other school districts that wrap around us that are just for that one town. So we have a number of towns within our school district. Um, our school district, as you can see, has um, four middle schools and three high schools. And again, I'm only for secondary. We do have 18 elementary schools. Um, uh, English learners, it feels like it's a whole lot more than 19%, right? So it's officially 19%, but man, it feels sometimes like it's 75%. But you can see that we are um, uh, also very high in free and reduced lunch. Next slide, please. So our story, um, our story um, pretty much starts in 1516, where this was our first year of using our adopted HMH Go Math curriculum. And um, the following year, we started for about three years holding these um, events where um, grade level teams were getting together five days every year. 
and they really wanted to learn about the standards through the framework and then also through the progression docs of mathematics and then tie it into the SBAC. And so as they learned about all of the shifts that were happening, um, the coherency of the math, um, who's supposed to be making the meaning everywhere, that, that they realized that the product that they had didn't do that, right? And um, I mean, it's no surprise. It was the first curriculum that came out um, with, uh, with Common Core. And so um, in, in these teams that met um, over these three years, in which we even dipped down to sixth grade, um, we went all the way up through Algebra 2, that they learned about illustrative mathematics. So when I am released their high school product, then in 1920, we had one high school, the entire math team go rogue. Um, and so when that happened, um, what we did is, is we told the high school story um, across the secondary sites. Um, and so um, all of them wanted to try it. The majority wanted to, it wasn't all, right? It was the tipping point of over 50%, except for one middle school. For whatever reason, they, they were not even part of the conversation. And so they ended up being told, unfortunately. But, but so in 2021, when the world shut down was our first year of using IM, but we understood that this wasn't a, a full adoption that this was really an opt in right and so and so it still was that hmh go math was still our official but the but the district was allowing sites to use im right and so we supported them um, in all things im completely during this pandemic year um, and then have continued uh, since then um, and then and then 2021 we had this opportunity to to write for this grant to see if we get it get accepted because we were in dire need of continuing of of hopefully officially um which we're leaning toward officially um getting this highly rated highly aligned um curriculum along with how do you implement something like this we've never had anything like this never had really a curriculum i feel like we've always adopted textbooks right with sets of problems um and then in 21 22 right our first year out of out of COVID and back into the classroom, um, our focus was really about who was making the meaning because we just got done having a very difficult time as all of us did. Um, and then in 22, 23, right, that that as teachers were um, uh, still coming out of the COVID and now students and everybody was back in the classroom, um, you know, we had some teachers that that really rose to the occasion at some of the middle schools. And then we had a couple of sites who were still questioning it. But also what's happening at the same time is we had a couple of teachers take a deep dive and try full implementation of BTC along with IM because they marry together so well. Um, and so what has happened as of this year, um, uh, due to um, further distance from COVID, due to BTC, due to our focus on um, uh, English language learners, that actually this year we have more and more teachers who are embracing IM, realize the value of it, um, who are coming together and lessing a plan uh, around it, um, who are, um, because of the focus of language learners, are really wanting to now um, uh, welcome us in and understand the, the math language routines and how they fit in um, and uh, really understand how to meet the needs of a language learner, which is extremely exciting. I mean, it's, it's just such an exciting time. And so um, we too are, are looking to probably officially adopt, uh, this, is, this has been officially adopted along the journey, but, but not as a true adoption, just kind of a one question vote. So we're going to officially adopt in the 25, 26 school year. And we feel like the teachers are much more equipped of what the shifts are. Um, this opportunity, they have really embraced this opportunity. And they're the ones who asked for this opportunity. I mean, it came from them in the first place by educating them. So we're very excited that they're the ones who are leading the way, even though it's been a very difficult challenge for them. And, and I'm sorry, what we have used is um, the Kendall Hunt through McGraw-Hill. We have not used the Desmos product um, but we have used just the traditional Kendall Hunt through McGraw Hill. Thank you so much, yeah. Denise. <laughs> Go ahead, Vincy. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks, everyone, for those um, quick 
sort of sketches of what's been happening in your districts, a lot of specific things that have been different um, challenges and joys. And if we can go to the next slide, I just want to jump in here to look across the, the common shared goals um, and common work that we, um, let's see, I'm getting a little Zoom signal there. Okay. Um, across the three sites. So we were brought in, um, and I believe we received the grant um, to partner with these three districts because of our background in the math language routines um, that are embedded in the original IM curriculum and then also in, to some extent, Amplify Desmos. And so we came in as partners primarily with a focus on supporting engagement um, with those math language routines um, as a key dimension of the design of this curriculum. So because that was our focus, um, we realized when we were gonna come in and do walkthroughs um, in all three sites, we needed some tools. We needed to think carefully about what tools we were using when we were going in to, to see what was happening with teaching practice and student action. Um, so we had a lot of conversations about what kind of tool that we might use, what kind of tool we might build together. Um, so in each district, we landed in a different place. Colton was already using the five by eight card and that was working um, well enough. And so that remained stable over the course of the grant. Um, and in West Contra Costa, we um, landed on a version of the IAM implementation reflection tool, a selection of the dimensions there. Um, and if People are curious about the details. Um, hopefully we can have more conversation about that and hear from Mark and Denise and Jessica about the specifics. And then in San Diego, we had a real opportunity to get creative. Um, and so we built a tool that was based on prior tools that I had um, developed in other collaborations. Um, it definitely has some resonance with the five by eight card. Um, and to some extent, um, happily that there is some residence, resonance also with the IM implementation reflection tool. Um, and on the next slide, um, we can see a little image of the IM implementation reflection tool and then the tool that we developed for use in San Diego. So a lot of the conversation early on and continuing across the grant has been around what might we look for in classroom practice as evidence of um, students student voice being um, alive and well in classrooms and also the math language routines happening. So we had to zoom out from the specifics of those routines and um, pull out three different look fors that are the kinds of things that are happening in classrooms where math language routines are happening, but more importantly, students are talking to each other, students are learning from each other, student ideas are at the center of attention of everyone in the room, and students have opportunities to revise both their thinking and their language, their words, their written work and their oral words. Um, so we can talk more about that if people are interested. And I'm gonna hand it now to Kira. Hi everyone. Um, so We've heard a little bit from each of our districts about what their current uh, their situation was both prior to starting this collaboration and then throughout the collaboration. And uh, Vincy was sharing a little bit about some of the specific tools. Um, but it, as you'll read in the brief, uh, when when Connect Ed um, started this grant work, one of the things that we were really hoping to do was set up a, a, a situation where there could be cross district um, learning. And in order for that to happen, uh, we really needed to spend some time both learning about each individual district's kind of context and helping um, each district set up implementation plans and goals, but that we had in the back of our minds this idea that eventually people would be collaborating. And so there needed to be some like connective tissue, right? There needed to be some reciprocity. There needed to be uh, things that people could collaborate around. And so uh, you see that represented in the in the the selection and creation of those walkthrough tools, where there was there was uh, the through line was really around like what we're seeing in classrooms and and uh, those practices associated with the math language routines. So for the first year, I think it was also because of COVID, we 
we um, we collaborated a little bit by um, making sure that all of the all of our districts uh, always attended um, the webinars and learning experiences um, together. And so when we were in breakout rooms, it was an opportunity for the, the leaders who are who are here today to meet and talk and share about their individual contexts, but also learn from each other's experiences and, and interact around the content that NERN was presenting to us. Um, and, uh, and then as uh, we went into year two and um, the, uh, the world started to open up a little bit more and we were able to um, meet in person, uh, Connected uh, des designed several sort of opportunities for folks from all three districts to get together and, um, and, and, and collaborate and learn. So we um, attended a conference together. We spent a day uh, at that conference actually um, uh, looking at uh, the, these different kind of like walkthrough tools associated with math language routines and coming up with a set of look fors. And then we all, um, I think the first uh, time we used that tool, we all came to set San Diego and as a team, we were walking through classrooms in San Diego and meeting teachers and talking about implementation. Um, and throughout the, uh, the, the, the life of this grant, so over the last few years, um, we've had opportunities to spend time uh, collectively in all three districts. Um, and so it's an opportunity for teachers and coaches and leaders to um, spend time in other places looking at and talking about um, the work. Um, and you'll hear a little bit in a few moments about how that, what that experience was like for them as professionals. Um, and I think the, the we, we still have a few, a few months left and we're um, looking forward to our final opportunity to learn together. Um, we're gonna be bringing the districts um, uh, uh, together here in San Diego again, and we will be um, talking about um, how to move this work forward and what structures can be put in place. I think it's a unique, a unique um, implementation story in that there were, even though, as you heard, each district has a very unique context. Um, there were a lot of a lot of things that are very shared, and and um, and having an opportunity to learn from each other has been really powerful. So with that in mind, let's, let's talk about those key takeaways. I'll pass it back to Tamira. Okay, so um, we're gonna have uh, each uh, district partner uh, kind of share on these uh, three prompts here. Um, and let's go in the order that we did um, when we presented our context. So we'll go Mark, Jessica, and then Denise. Great. Uh, so, uh, Tamara, I guess we'll, we'll do like the first question and then we'll switch it up. Is that how it works? Yeah. Um, um, yeah. yeah the, the expectations. Um, gosh, you know, um, any opportunity to to go visit somewhere else and see um, see other schools and, and districts in action is is exciting. Um, so uh, I was expecting to see just a lot of interesting stuff. Um, and I was in particular interested to see uh, some math language routine work, which we were able to see in San Diego in the learning lab, which is fantastic. Um, the uh, the opportunity really to, to be in a different space, uh, to think, to plan away from the office and from the school site is, is always a, a, a great opportunity. So um, I was expecting to be able to kind of Take a step back and 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 think. So those are kind of the expectations I had initially uh, with these uh, with these engagements. Yeah, and I'm gonna just kind of piggyback off of that. I think the just being able to go to the districts. Um, we have a a team of um, four in our middle level. And so all of us have had a chance to see either West Contra Costa um, or Colton um, throughout this past year and a half. And so I think part of like learning about what they're doing, successes, challenges, um, we've had some of the same challenges. And so kind of coming together and 
working through those things and thinking about, you know, what's working and what can we take back and try out in San Diego um, and, you know, to make it better. And I think when you're in, like, in your district or in your system, sometimes you don't always get to see, like, what other districts are doing. So having this was amazing um, because there's always takeaways. And uh, I think I learned a lot with, we learned a lot with partnering with um, Colton and West Contra Costa. Um, I, I can't agree more, Jessica, that um, you did. I, I feel like we got, you know, really focused on on just us. And so it was, it's been great either, even if it's just um, virtually, right, getting connecting with you um, on, on, you know, what we are going through or what you are going through or what our successes are, that I think it's been very important to us to realize we are not alone um, and, and that we're in this journey together. Um, but, but it's exciting to see different takes, right? I mean, there's, we're, we're using, I mean, we happen to be using something different we're not using the Desmos product. I mean, our teachers can use Desmos, um, but we're not using the Desmos product. So it was very exciting to go down to San Diego and, and observe the Desmos in action. Um, but um, I, I really enjoy hearing from others and, um, and, and just, you know, I think it's just like back in the classroom, right? You just get stuck of what's in your classroom. You have to break through those walls in order to think outside the box to, to think differently. So um, I, I think um, I've really treasured the times of getting to, to cross collaborate. And even when I, I wasn't able to go this year, but last year when I got to go, um, I think it was down in San Diego, uh, you know, just across the country meeting and just hearing what everybody is doing. Um, we definitely treasure that and try to take some of that back. Yeah, we're, we're all on the same journey, aren't we? You know, it's a, uh, you know, we're all in different boats, um, uh, all traveling, hopefully towards the same destination. Uh, and uh, at the same time, you know, you see the same stuff, you know, you see teachers at different stages of learning, coaches trying out different methods, uh, coordinators keeping momentum going, thinking ahead, planning ahead, um, you know, so there's a similarity to, to, uh, to what, what we see out there, I think, from our different districts, uh, and at the same time know that there are, you know, different uh, variables that are going on. So let's have more coaches than others. Uh, some of them more structure at, uh, in uh, at uh, at upper levels of uh, administration. Um, so yeah, I mean it's it's uh, it's 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 comforting to know that we're all kind of working towards that same goal, uh, kind of having those same struggles. Uh, how about if I pass it on to Jessica? Jessica, you want to do bullet point number two, how did working across cross district collabs support your learning? Thank you. Um, yes, I think the you know the similarities between our districts, you know, in San Diego, we started with illustrative mathematics and having that kind of as the foundation of learning, you know, student centered, student centered environment with language routines was the same for Desmos. Um, I think going up to uh, West Contra Costa and seeing Desmos in action up there and then the illustrative with Colton is that um, the curriculum is very similar, but we were finding that we had a need of figuring out what does blended learning really look like. Um, like teachers loved, you know, before COVID, we're using the illustrative. It was more hands-on. We got to COVID. It was all computer-based. And then we went with the Desmos, which we knew was going to be, you know, high tech. But how how do we really get, um, you know, students engaged in learning that you can have a blend of tech and paper and hands-on? And so I think that was a lot of our conversation is, you know, what does that look like? So for us, our team came together. Um, we partnered with, you know, continuing with Connect Ed and, um, and then bringing on Amplify Desmos is that we wanted to have that as a focus um, for, our, for our year of implementation. So we really focused around elevating student voice in a blended learning classroom. And I think that's where the pieces of all the districts had come in is, you know, what is the 
language routines look like? Um, because that was a thing that we all had in common and that we all wanted to, to highlight. So uh, we, we were building that this year. Um, and yeah, we were training, you know, close to 200 teachers um, and still working on that. So that's one of the big things that I think that uh, that, that collaboration helps support our professional development with our teachers. And Denise, I'll pass it to you. Thank you. Um, so, so I think I think for us it was a little different, but I'm very encouraged to watch your guys' journey through Desmos, right? Through the technology, because um, I don't know what happened at your other sites, but I know with distance learning that when they came back the following year, that because because the the IM that we were using was not technology based, right? It had some of the the activities, you know, Desmos and, and GeoGebra, but um, the the original people who went rogue on it, you know, whole high school and then a few middle school teachers, they were they were using the paper pencil version. So then when they came back from COVID, then they were just so connected to the computer, they were struggling with the IM that we have because it's hands on, right? It's it's more paper pencil. So, um, so I, I think it's intriguing to watch what you guys are going through, right? And, and the blended, um, and I am glad for our teachers at this point that we didn't do Desmos because we're trying to wean them off the computer and, and get them back in which they are. They, they have finally arrived back to where they, now they choose it when the learning um, uh, seems fit to do it on the technology versus, you know, I think it's because we were just so far removed from routines in math, let alone math language routines. It was to such these these straight rows of teacher knew all and, and students were just supposed to sit and get that um, that without having the Desmode, having more of the, the paper pencil product that um, is 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 helping them now four years later to. Um, to realize what it's supposed to look like, right at the table, how the routines work, um, and um, and I'm grateful for that. And I think that um, you know we're we're keeping our eyes on Amplify, right? As Amplify is right now um, uh, creating their own version of I am uh, kindergarten through Algebra two curriculum, where it embeds both, right? That that what you just talked about, um, Jessica, about that 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 blended learning. Um, and I think there's a place for that, right? And so I'm excited to see what this looks like, but I'm also very excited that our teachers were a little bit more removed and got back to what do routines look like um, in this in this paper and pencil event, right? Um, but anyways, thank you. Mark, back to you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I look I look forward actually to coming uh, coming back down to San Diego uh, in particular. Uh, specifically about the things we're just talking about, right? Um, you know, what what is the different what are the different ways that teachers are actually using blended curriculum? Um, you know, because we see a variety of things happening. We're kind of trying to direct teachers into kind of using some more paper and pencil with on screen work. So I, I'm, I'm I'm eager to see some uh, some other ideas out there um, as well uh, to kind of give us a, additional thoughts. And also, I mean, Jessica, I know you guys are in contact with with uh, with Amplified Desmos about kind of structuring the the student workbook based on based on your experiences and teachers' experiences. There, um, I'm eager to learn more about that, um, and I'll actually give feedback to Amplify as well on our end. Um, so this, you know, kind of tag teaming to make sure that, like the publishers are like creating something that's really going to make it actually work well in in uh, in the classrooms. Um, yeah, uh, taking back things to our own districts, uh, Denise, you want to hit this one first? Well, I thank you, Mark. Um, I, I think, uh, one of the big things I'm going to take away from both of your districts that we don't have, but we see it as a great need and that is coaches. Um, we definitely see the value, um, uh, that the, that the two, two of you have in coaching, um, and in those reflective cycles that, um, I mean, we're starting some of that reflective cycle work, but we, we are, we, we have not embraced coaching yet, but 
I see the handwriting on the wall now that, and my partner is not here today, Jeremiah Lack, um, but him and I have really been impacted um, by how important um, the coaches are to help be that person closer to the teacher, closer to the actual real work um, instead of me, right? Him and I are both up at the district office. We're very far removed, but to have coaches who are just there to support the teachers um, in that day-to-day -day week and hear that you have been able to really um, make some, some huge strides in that. Um, so I think that's probably um, our biggest takeaway um, along with um, embracing the idea of, of the technology in the curriculum, right? With the use of the Desmos and the success that both of you are having. So I think that's that's probably a couple of the biggest takeaways along with, of course, just just the, the whole support of, the, of, of this grant. And that is, um, it is no longer when you adopt a new curriculum, you get a half day PD so you can look at the teacher wrap, right? It's really about years of an implementation plan um, and and that's really because of all the shifts that have, that are happening. That have I mean, they actually started ten years ago. We're still trying to catch up, right? We're still we're still taking our crawling baby steps, but um, and we have to acknowledge that and acknowledge the the. For me, I have to acknowledge it and acknowledge what the teachers are going through to realize this is a small bite-sized implementation plan, but it's so exciting that it's around highly rated, highly aligned curriculum. Right. It's not outside of that. It is within that. And the teachers are finally starting to embrace that. It's been slow and hard because they're so used to creating their own thing and doing their own thing and going off, you know, siloing so bad that that um, rallying around has created um, some better PLCs, some cross collaboration um, across sites. So, I mean, um, there's so much to take back to our district that I've learned from um, both of you both of you and through the experience of, of this grant. Okay, well, thank you all so much for, um, for that discussion. Um, and I think that leads us to our Q&A time. Um, all of that was really wonderful. Really appreciate um, everything that you all shared. So now we'll open it up uh, to, um, Q and A. Thanks so much to Myra and um, Mark and Jessica and Denise. I actually wanted to acknowledge Vincy's comment in the chat about how much work it is to design these days together and coordinate all of the logistics of these visits. Um, this question could be for any of the Connect Ed folks or from the district perspective. Um, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit more about what it takes to plan um, these kinds of collaborations and what were some of the challenges that you ran into and how did you overcome them? Well, I'll just tee it up a little bit and whoever wants to jump in with more details, please feel free. But um, just being alongside, I mean, really watching because people in the districts are the ones doing that work. And any of you have, who have done similar things probably know exactly what I'm talking about, but just watching Shauna and Mark put together those, those schedules um, and Jessica and her team put together just the schedule, like figuring out which classes can we visit when, how can we sequence this? How can we build in time to debrief? Um, and then Denise and her team of herself I mean, an amazing amount of work, um, just getting it all scheduled out in a way that makes sense, going from, you know, different sites to the logistics of just moving a group from one site to another, um, picking what to focus on, like in, in Colton, we wanted to see building thinking classrooms being done in an early stage, you know, or a new teacher trying it out for the first time, and then some more experienced teachers doing it. Um, in you know complementarity with illustrative math um, so anyway choosing the focus but then building out that schedule across multiple days is an immense amount of just logistical work so huge thanks to all of you for doing that and for the ones coming up yeah, we have one coming up April 10th and 11th, and I see Nicole and Brittany are on the webinar today and they know firsthand of 
how like the coordination of the teachers. And I'm gonna say number one is why it works is because they have connections with teachers. So when we email a teacher and a principal and say, hey, can we come visit? It's because the connections they have. Um, and so that's like number one, we can get our foot in the door, um, but it's really about that relationship. And then, yeah, prep periods, uh, trying to get to as many school sites or as many classrooms. Um, and really, it's, you know, it's opting in. Teachers can say no or yes. Um, and, uh, you know, but they're always there. Most teachers are always open, um, which is nice. That it does take a little bit of time. It's taking, you know, a village to, to put a day together so we can see, you know, things happening across our district. So. And I'll just add, um, you know, from the provider perspective, um, it, the really important thing is to is to listen for and find those like authentic problems that are shared across the context because people are busy and 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 to take time to travel to another city and to be in another space, it has to be it has to be connected to something that's like really really the work that they need to do. Um, so it can't be it can't be prefabricated uh, and predecided. You have to um, really find the through line with your districts and then help them to really use each other as resources. So I put a question. Thanks for that. I put a question in the chat. Um, having been on site with you all during these collaborative times. Um, was really just uh, impressive to see the conversations that were happening at the debriefs and what you all were grappling with. And I know kind of the, obviously the big idea of this project is to get these practices into the hands of our students to be able to grapple and experience. So from your perspective, um, how do you think these cross are the ones that have occurred or they can continue to improve student outcomes? I put that question in the chat too, if you want to refer to it. How do you see that helping, moving the needle? Well, at the risk of background noise here at JFK, I just want to jump in because I liked what you said, Amy, in the chat. You actually asked it a little differently. You talked about student experience. And I just will say an immediate thing that happens when, I mean, we've all witnessed this and experienced it ourselves, but when a group of adults comes into a classroom and they're paying attention to what's happening and to what students are doing and walking around and looking at what is on students' desks and listening into the conversation students are having, that does something to students, um, students' experience in math class that I think, you know, just the, the event itself, the, the day itself, the visit itself, I think it communicates to students that adults are interested in what you are doing and what you are thinking and how you are learning. And I think that in itself just, you know, there, there are deeper things, but I think just that in itself does have an impact on, on students, you know, sense of, oh, what I'm doing here is worth something to these strangers who are showing up looking at what we're doing. So I think it assigns some worthiness to, to their work and their thinking. Thanks, Vincent, and thanks for uh, going with the question I put in the chat versus the one I stated, because the one I put in the chat is the one I was more interested in, um, in general, having been on site, seeing some of the experiences and knowing that when we're in San Diego, that actually lifted like the idea of having students come to the convening and student voice being at the convening. And that learning in general, I think, really impacted a lot of work that I know at NERN that we began to think about student voice and perspective. And I'm also just wondering, um, in that just that was just a huge takeaway for me so i won't say my next wondering leaving it open for other questions people may have um in the audience about how to make this work the idea of districts walking into other districts observing other classrooms in other districts debriefing about educator uh practice and kind of what they saw and twists and turns of that what other questions are out there The M. Johnson put uh, um, something in the chat there, thinking about how cross collaboration helps schools sustain their implementation. Um, I'm thinking in terms of a district perspective, right? So for for us to be able to go and and have an ongoing 
check in with other districts. If if it's, you know, I, I have a I have a separate little cohort here with San Francisco and Oakland that I check in with monthly and we talk about stuff, right? Just to kind of support each other in a variety of different challenges that we're having. But for us as well, Colton San Diego and West Contra, uh, I see no reason why this should stop here as well. Like we can continue on um, just to kind of inspire us and just give us ideas and know that again, we're all in that same, you know, working towards that same end goal of, of, uh, of students enjoying their mathematics classrooms and be able to have great rich conversations. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's inspiring, inspiring and it, it keeps me going, um, as, as one piece of, uh, of implementation. I, you know, I, I agree with you, Mark. I have had an opportunity The the director of language support services left our district to, um, another district, just, uh, probably about 10 or 15 miles away. And, um, and that district was starting with IM. And so I've been able to connect with that district. Um, and we too talk and text and I have um, invited, it's a small district, right? I think it has um, only one middle and two elementary, right? It's a very, or three elementary, very, very small district. But um, I've been able to, um, because she's she it's so close right invite her over when I'm doing a professional learning opportunity this year around a math language routine that's right out of the curriculum and so which inspired her so we've been really going back and forth and so what I've been learning um, through this grant through all of you um, being able to share it with somebody else um, who who is taking on this journey has been very inspiring because they were also asking me questions they're outside of the box right that's the beauty I think of of working with different districts is is those things that come up outside of the box because I think again we just so focus so much in, inside of our box and I'm seeing that I know we're talking about the districts but we're we're realizing that just the end of last year we're realizing um, how important it is for our teachers to get outside of their box their classroom and visit other teachers at their site at other sites even vertically, right? We're, you know, going up to the high school that they're taking back so much from that. We're trying to figure out how to um, continue that work. Coach Shauna might have a little something to say about vertical collaboration. We're doing some of that right now uh, within our school district, um, just as an example of, you know, site to site visits. Thank you. Um, can you all hear me all right? I'm sorry I was late coaching. <laughs> um, well, one of the things that um, this whole experience has uh, given us the opportunity to start rekindling our vertical alignment between our, our middle schools and the high schools. Um, especially because some of our high schools were really interested in what we were doing in middle school as far around Desmos. And now we have, I think, four, four of our six comprehensive high schools now using Desmos for Algebra 1 and uh, having another one coming on uh, next year. And so we've been, we've been um, setting up meetings and collaborating and having visits from the high schools to the middle schools and seeing what this thing is all about. And um, a lot of, a lot of interest has, has um, been generated from it. So we're really excited about that. Um, especially because, you know, like it was said, said before, um, after COVID, everyone was kind of still, you know, off in their own little worlds, you know, even even on the same at the same sites, so it's nice to have this opportunity to bring these groups back together, the middle schools and their and their high schools back together, so we can get gain some common footing on where we want um, our students uh, to to go and to achieve mathematically. Um, so it's a it's it's more of a team effort instead of everybody just out there by themselves, and Desmos is the thing where we we seem to be rallying around. So you know, excited to see this happening in the future. 
um, and uh, we're doing whatever we can to keep it going. And I'll just um, jump in and uh, say one of the what one of the other ways that um, there we supported collaboration. I think Denise, you kind of mentioned this a little bit um, earlier on, was around coaching. So Connect Ed uh, facilitated a, a coaching collaborative uh, that uh, brought together a few folks from West Contra Costa who were being um, who were in the position to be able to be developing their skills as coaches and who may or may not have had the, the sort of official title, but were and or were developing that and then also working um, with folks in the similar positions in in uh, Colton. And so uh, unlike San Diego that does does or did during the during the, the course of the grant had had some uh, sort of formal coaching structures in those smaller districts where where that resource was um, not as not as prevalent. Um, we were able to leverage um, across the districts opportunities for learning and sharing. Um, and that, I think that is that is one way that um, uh, that's sort of like a model for what districts can do to share uh, a resource that might be needed, but might not be prioritized. One of the things um, this year is because we've had large um, events with the professional learning with our SDM and ADM days. Um, and some days we've had a, a hundred teachers between three days attend. And that was really the connection and networking among teachers where our coach, our middle school coaching um, team was able to connect teachers with each other. Um, teachers were like open opening classrooms, like, yes, come visit. So we had, I believe, 18 school sites who had cross-site visits, were able to visit each other's classrooms. Um, and I mean, that would not have been able to happen without the grant because we helped uh, connect that has helped um, to be able to facilitate and to just, you know, finances and all of that makes, makes a difference. Um, but those connections are still going. And even at the high school, I think, um, LaShonda, you talked about that where like high school is like wondering what middle school is doing. And so now we have six school sites uh, at high school um, out of our 16 comprehensive that are trying on the Amplify, or not Amplify Desmos, but Desmos math um, because they want to, you know, they like what they see. Um, and they're trying to, you know, trying it as a resource. Um, but it all is teacher, teachers, um, you know, words and connecting with each other and learning from each other. And that's why, you know, things are taking off. All right. Well, I do want to be mindful of our time as we are at the top of the hour. Um, and thank you so much. I know we didn't get to every single one of the questions. Mark, I saw that you responded to Ellen's question in the chat. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, if you would like to take the last 30 seconds or minute to kind of speak to that, you're welcome to do that. Um, otherwise, I do just want to give you a heads up that uh, Stephen will be sharing the brief that we mentioned earlier about this work. So you can feel free to check that out as well. So any last words from our presenters, uh, either directly to Ellen's question or um, other wrap up um, that they would like to say before we end? Uh, for me, it's been uh, it's been a great journey these past three years and I, I look forward to, uh, to keeping some momentum going. Um, and I guess we're gonna start figuring that out next time we meet in San Diego in a couple of weeks. So looking forward to that. Thank you so much to all of the district folks who uh, took the time to prepare for this and be on this call and share your experiences. Um, I really appreciate you all. And um, I'm also looking forward to seeing you soon. All right, thank you everyone. Thanks for coming. Take care, have a great rest of your week.